Okay, so where I left you was with a really messy web page that looks like the one on the right here, and also um, some, some concepts for you to play with, etc. Before beginning this tutorial, why don't you clean up your HTML and include some content, maybe a bio page about yourself, or something real for you to play with to make this more meaningful. And then uh, come back and, and uh, we can get going. As you'll notice here, I pasted some cheesy bio thing from my department website about me and I rearranged the photo here but I got rid of the abstract and whatnot and so why don't you just take a moment to do that okay so the next thing we're going to do actually is we're going to start talking about CSS but before we begin talking about CSS cascading style sheets I think it's important that we uh, reiterate what it does HTML organizes your content and CSS makes it look pretty. CSS allows you to do anything. Change the appearance of, of any element in your HTML uh, document. And you can do this by changing colors, of course, sizes, borders, border curves, um, also the vertical hierarchy of elements, layering them. There's just so much to be done. There's no way we can cover it all, but a really good website to go to if you're trying to remember what can be done with with CSS is W3 Schools Online. And here they have a CSS tutorial, which is text-based but very good. But they also have a CSS reference. And here it will tell you you can find millions of things to do. Um, what you can tweak about colors, for example, background colors, etc. All the codes are here this, in this reference. So definitely use this w3schools.com um, it's it's a great reference when you're trying to remember or just learn about new things that you can do with CSS as well as HTML. Their HTML reference is excellent as well. So, um, and there that is. All right. So moving on. Before I talk about CSS in too much detail, I'd like to take another look at our HTML page. And as you'll see here, right now it's pretty nondescript. We have divs, we have paragraphs, we have a header and a heading two we have an image, etc. Now, in order for us to style objects, it's what you're going to notice is CSS basically selects different elements from your HTML and then applies styles to them. And you can do this by simply be, uh, selecting all divs in your document and applying a style, by selecting all paragraphs and applying a certain font family, for example. But at times, you're going to want to select specific divs and specific paragraphs, maybe italicize uh, a specific paragraph as a call-out paragraph, so to speak, a, a great quote that you want to highlight. And so, though this is a little counterintuitive, um, one thing we can add to our HTML, and I know we haven't talked about styling yet, but it's it's important. I think it's because HTML is about organizing, this is, this is crucial before we talk about the style sheets, are classes and IDs. So in any tag, save for the body and the HTML and the head tags, in any tag in your document, you can give a name or a class, kind of a classification, if you will. And how do you do that? Well, let's say that this div here, this is my header div, as you may recall, I want to create this into kind of a header, a header style thing eventually. I want to specifically give this div an ID or a specific name that nothing else has. And I'm going to call it something very original, header. Now by doing this, by typing id equals sign in quotes the name header, in CSS now I can specifically target this div and this div only by the id header and tweak this one without tweaking the forthcoming or even previous divs in this document. All right, this div, let's give an id of our um, actually let's give it a class, sorry, class of content. Now what's the difference between an ID and a class? An ID is only one object can have this in your whole website. So, uh, well per web page really, uh, so let me rephrase that, per web page but only one object can have an ID name. It's a name. It's like Ian Alexander Muhlenhaus, right? There, fortunately, I don't think there are any other ones of me in the world because it's a unique last name, but it's unique. 
A class, on the other hand, is kind of like uh, it's a it's a method of a bunch of things can belong to a, a classification. So Ian Alexander Muhlenhaus is my ID. My nationality, for better or worse, is the uh, United States. Um, that's a class. The United States is a class. A lot of people have the classification of United States citizenship. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving this div a class content, a uh, class name of content, because on other web pages what I'll probably do is I'll style this 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 content on the web page a certain way, certain font, certain color, you know, certain headers look a certain way, anything that falls in this div. And actually I'll want to, I would will want to standardize that across my whole website. And so now anytime I want to standardize on any web page I create, including page two, I can create a um, I can name the give a div a class of content and it'll it'll all look the same. So here actually let's do that. Under body, this is my page two document. I'm going to create a div with a class of content. And I'll put the link in here. And so now when I do create a CSS style sheet and if I, uh, when I target content and say to have purple text for JMU or whatnot, um, this div on this page will have purple text and this div on this page will also have purple text. So ID and header. You don't, you can use it on other things besides divs. You can use it on any tag. I could call this h2 tag. I could give this an ID of header title. I can give a paragraph in it. Um, a class name of first paragraph. Maybe I want the first paragraph of every um, web page to look slightly different than all the others. So you can put these IDs and classes everywhere throughout this. All right, now let's get into CSS. The next step is to create a CSS folder. So let's do that right now. Over here in our root folder again, let's right click and hit new folder and type CSS. This is where we're going to st store every CSS file we have on our website. A CSS file is a lot like an HTML file. It's simply a text file saved um, as .css instead of .txt or .html. So let's go, we don't have to close this page, let's go to new and then let's hit save and let's click into our CSS folder and let's give this an original name like style.css. Awesome. And we'll hit save. And now that we said saved it as a .css, you'll notice down here it's going to edit and, and warn us when we make type, typographical errors based on the CSS language. Excellent. So, CSS is comprised of two parts. The CSS scripting, or whatever you want to call it, language, is actually really, really easy to write. And it's my favorite thing to write because it's really hard to goof up. And if you make a mistake, it's easy to find it. So basically, you have what's called the selector, and then you have a descriptor. The selector is very easy. It's an HTML tag, a class name, or an ID name. So. Let's start with something fun here. I had a, a H2 in my document. I can just type H2 without the brackets. That is a selector. Basically, the CSS file is now selecting. Uh, with, if I don't do anything else, it's going to, whatever I end up doing after this, whatever I end up typing, it's going to select all H2s and do this to the, uh, selecting them, and then it's going to uh, do what I want it to to them. The next thing, the, uh, the syntax is quite easy, the grammar. We just type a mustache, or a curly bracket, although I like calling them mustaches for whatever reason. And what we do is, in between these mustaches, we write what we want, how we want H2s to be styled. And that's it. That's all, all it is. Now, to, for clarity, I like to hit enter here. It makes it easier to read. And then what you can do, because CSS doesn't read spaces either, we can create a style on each line and it makes it easier to read. What do I mean here? Well, let's give the H2 a different color. This black color here is kind of boring. So let's do this. Let's type color colon and we can go 
purple semicolon. So let me explain some things here. We're not going to see any changes right away on this page, and I'll explain why in a moment on the web page. But the syntax for CSS is awesome. H2, we select all H2s in curly brackets. What are we going to do to them? Color. Color means basically the text color, the font color. So you type what's, what style property you want to change, colon, and then how you want it changed. I typed purple. It has the basic hues are, are memorized. You can also type uh, well over a million colors in RGB code. We'll get to that later. And then when you're done, you type semicolon. And that tells the, the browser, that's it. We're done reading this style. It's purple, period. Semicolon in both JavaScript and in CSS means period. It tells the computer, next, go on to the next thing. All right. We can do other things, though, too. And one thing that's great about brackets, as you'll see, is as you start typing CSS code, it gives you suggestions. So I'm typing fonts, and I can't maybe remember, how do I uh, make it a specific font family, a specific font? Well, as I'm typing, I'll see, oh, font family. And here we can, <laughs> they have some uh, recommended options here, but we can type different font names. So I'll type Corbell and maybe Ariel's boring, Tahoma, Verdana, Ariel, Helvetica, Sans Serif. And what comes at the end? Semicolon. All right. Let me explain this one. Font family is important. Unless you want every website to look like it was made in 1998, you'll want to always change the font family. But why am I listing so many fonts? What, what font do I want people to use? In HTML, HTML runs on in the browser. And so every person has different fonts installed on their computer. By typing a list of fonts here after font family, what it's saying is if the person has Corbell installed on their computer, use this to show the web page. Or, uh, sorry, not the web page, the heading. If, if they don't have that, use Tahoma. If they don't have that, use Verdana. If they don't have that, use Arial. If they don't have that, use Helvetica. If worse comes to worse, just use whatever the generic default sans serif font is. So in a way, you put this list. It's kind of a bucket list of which fonts you'd prefer. If they have them, they, they view the website in all the way down to just use something sans serif. Sans serif are fonts without little curly Q things on the end, without serifs, little things on the end. All right, so we've got this. Let's do another one now. We'll tap down so that H2 is pretty well solved. Let's do paragraph. Oh, okay. Um, paragraph, color. Let's type gray. Probably a British gray, I'm thinking. Let's see which one works. If you double click in brackets, it'll show you the color if you click over a color. Cool. And then let's do font size. We can use points, um, which or pixels, I mean, which change depending on the resolution of the screen. But I'll do that. You can also do medium, small, etc. Let's do 16 pixels. There's something called M's you can use too, but I'm not very comfortable with that, and I won't pretend I am. Um, and then finally, let's do background color. All right, cool. So. Uh, here we go, and notice it's black. All right, so I'm going to hit save on the CSS. We now have some simple CSS here that's uh, pretty nice. Let's do one other thing, though. We have these list items. Let's play with those a little bit. So let's go li, and let's give these list items a background color. Oh, telephone. Time out. And let's do, sorry about the interruption there. They hung up on me to top it all off. Background color, black. Color, white. Border, solid, two pixels, white. I think that's the right order. All right. Let's hit save. We'll see. Um, if you ever get confused about what to do, where do you go? You go here, CSS reference, um, border. I 
is this not working now? All right, we got a CSS reference, and we will just look for an alpha order on the left side, border, 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 type here, and you'll get code. Five pixels, solid red. So I probably did it in the wrong order, I think. We'll just go here. All right, let's hit save. Now, as you probably noticed, nothing's happening to our web page. Why? Because though we have a CSS file saved now, there's nothing in our index page saying, look for this CSS. This, does, this file is in the same website, but it doesn't know that this, it's supposed to be interacting with the CSS file. And this is where the head of the HTML comes in very, very handy again. So let's hit enter here. And then let's type link. Uh, REL style sheet. And I actually always have trouble, I have to remember, uh, admit, remembering the order and stuff of these things. It's not of particular importance, I don't think. Watch, it probably won't work now. Um, but you should type this every time. Um, uh, relationship equals style sheet type equals text dot slash CSS I think now in HTML5 it by default presumes it is a, a cascading style sheet but it's still good to do and then we want to do href equals now notice because we have a CSS folder brackets is like this folder why yes this CSS why yes save And there you go. It's we have a purple header. Notice it's Corbell. How can you tell? Because the numbers are not aligned. The four is lower. We gave our bullets a black background. Uh, that's not exactly a nice. Notice that the the links are still in purple by default, so we can't even read those. We gave the body gray text. It is gray. Let's uh, zoom this in. It is gray and it has a black background. We are rocking. You only have to type this once for each web page, and now the style sheet is linked. Let's go back to our style sheet, and let's get rid of the black background. Hit save, hit refresh or control R in the browser, gone. Now here's the cool thing. Uh, well, let's change one other thing before I get too carried away. Let's make these, um, let's make the Let's make the border black around these and the inside of the list order things purple. Hit refresh. Yeah, that's looking heinous. Nice. So as you can see, we can we can target different objects. So let's go back to our HTML file really quickly. And what I want to show you is if you now anytime you add new paragraphs for example there goes my full web page with starting to add Latin text if I hit save here and then hit refresh you'll see that it adds it with the same style so we never have to restyle it after we've styled it once and if I decide I don't like that horrible default uh, times font no problem I can go to paragraph Font family, Corbell, hit refresh, just like that. All right. So how do we target something that has an ID or class name? Good question. Let's go back to index and look at what our ID or class names were. Header is an ID name. Content is the div class, etc. Um, and then let me give this paragraph oh good we have class first paragraph so here in the CSS you can target classes and you can target IDs and all it requires is one extra character at the start of the name to target a class you put a period and then the class name first paragraph and now what I can do is um, make the color black 
font size 22 pixels. Make sure you put pixels. Font family. Yeah, what's a good font family? Jeez. Well, we'll just do Corbell. And what about font style? Italic. All right, let's hit save. Let's go here. And notice the paragraph that is just the paragraph keeps the paragraph styling. But the first, the one that has the class I, a first paragraph gets the first paragraph styling. So the class ID names override the default styling for paragraph. Another thing you can do actually is put something called a span inside of a, so this is a paragraph, class first paragraph. There's a span tag and we can give this an ID of funky. You probably want to use names that have more meaning than this, but I'm starting to lose it after a day of recording these things. So we'll give that a span. We have to close that tag, so there's the close span. And so now when I click here, you'll see that the span, ID funky. What's a span? A span is basically a stretch of text, either in a header or in a paragraph or anywhere on your web page. It's a way of, of identifying or claiming a bit of text. And so if we go back to the style sheet, I gave it an ID. Class, you use a period first, an ID name, you use a pound sign, hash sign, and I called it funky. And let's make this color red, font style normal, and what can we do? Um, font or text decoration. And you'll start to get used to these. You can't know them until you start playing with them a lot. But do check out the CSS thing. You can do anything. All right, let's hit save. Let's refresh this. Oh, and that's not working. So something's wrong here. Funky. Span ID equals funky. Well, I screwed something up there. Um, I was under the impression. Let's do that. There we go. Um, the class worked, the ID didn't. Perhaps spans can't have IDs. But as you can see, now this text is red, it has a line through it, etc. It's not italicized. So the funky overrules the first paragraph, which overruled the paragraph. And this is how cascading style sheets work. Basically, the more reading the HTML, the more specific you get, the, the closer to the actual HTML element that, gets, that overrides what it's nested in. We can actually go and play with body, which is always fun. So we can give the body with just a straight up, because it's an HTML element, background, color, Let's do something funny. This is uh, in my textbook. I have a whole chapter on color using hexadecimal, uh, hexadecimal color schemes here. All right, and let's hit save, and let's go here and hit refresh. And we gave the whole body this kind of crazy blue color. But this is a great way to create layered and kind of textured websites, because what we can do now is, as you may recall, I made a div called content uh, with a class called content. So, because content is within, this div is within the body, it's going to be kind of on top, we can go and class content, and we can do background color number ddd. And so what was kind of cool about this is, as you can see, the gray is now floating within the blue. So this is how you can start styling websites pretty slickly. One other thing that will be very important, and then I will end this, and you guys should just start playing with CSS, is aligning objects on the page. And 
quite frankly, there's so much to, that goes on behind alignment that it's too much to get into right now with, uh, without getting too, too wild. But I would like to show you how to center this picture, for example, or resize the picture even on the page. So let's do this. Let's, does my image have an ID? I don't think it does. So let's go to here and where's the image? So we have a href blah blah blah. We hit space, we give it an ID, equal sign, <clears throat> meta, hit save. So notice you can add multiple um, properties and values in here. And then we go to the style sheet and we will do ID meta width 200 pixels hit save oh, look at that shrinking what the heck Okay, so let's talk about <clears throat> about formatting it and aligning things up. Basically, what we have so far is we, we've done a nice, well, maybe not a nice job, but we've, we've styled our website with different colors and different um, content here. But what if we want to lay this out a little different? Because HTML reads top to bottom, and it nests objects within other elements based on where the end tags are. But still, it's very much top down. So we have the header to... We had the heading to the bullet list, we have the bullets, we have the image next, and then we have the, uh, you know, uh, well actually the image is in the content div, and then in the content div we have the first paragraph and then the second paragraph. But let's rearrange some of these things. Wouldn't it be nice if we could, for example, uh, make the width of the body different so that the HTML doesn't just expand as we move it back and forth, see how wide the text is getting, it's kind of annoying for reading purposes. Well, CSS will allow us to do that. So let's start with body, and let's set a, a width limit to our to our um, website. Auto width means it will automatically go as wide as the div it's enclosed in. You can write you know a, a width for any object or element in an HTML. Body though is the first element, so uh, an auto width is 100%. So let's try to do, let's say, 960 px, which stands for pixels. Let's hit save. Let's refresh. And as you can see now, the text, the page itself, will not go any wider than 960 pixels. Now, what happens if we go under 960 pixels? Let's check that out. Sorry, I'm losing my... It also doesn't shrink when you go less than 960 pixels. It is set at 960 pixels. There's some benefits and drawbacks to setting a standard width. Uh, basically, if you do this and the screen is a very poor resolution and not wide enough, there's a chance that people will have to scroll left and right to read your text. However, 960 is not that egregious of a number, um, so that would be safe. The benefit is that you can, as I'll show you in a second, you can center your web page no matter how wide a monitor is. You can make sure that your your formatting doesn't change. It stays the same width and it's centered on the web on the in the web browser. Right now this isn't centered. It's left aligned. So let's use some CSS to center this puppy. Centering things in 
CSS is a little counterintuitive, but it's not that hard. Basically, you have to write two lines of code. Margin right, auto. Margin left, auto. Margins tell the browser how much space to put on um, outside of a an element, so be it an ID element, a, an HTML element, a class, and if you set both to auto, the right margin and the left margin, it will find the automatic balance between the two. And what it does is it goes as far left as it can, and it goes as far right as it can, and you'll end up in the middle. And so if we auto margin right auto, margin left auto, the body ends up in the middle. All right, let's make it a little thinner and see what happens. What if we go 600? It works. Now, of course, our image is too big for this, so we'll have to resize that, but it absolutely works. Let's try image with auto. That's not auto. Whoops. The, the image, obviously, width is not working on. Let's try 100 pixels. There we go. Um, so we typed 100 pixels, and now our image is 100 pixels wide. The, it stays in proportion. We could write a height, too, but you wouldn't want to do that unless you know the ratio of this photo. So if I write 500 pixels, it's going to get very distorted. It's now forcing it to be 500 pixels high, but only 100 pixels wide. If you choose only one or the other, width or height, it will keep it uh, proportional, so it won't, it won't get distorted. All right, that's a little small. I mean, I like my dog a lot. There we go. So we've got um, that. So the next thing we want to do is give this unordered list that looks pretty heinous. We want to try to create this into kind of buttons at the top of our web page. So so into what we might call a nav bar. So let's go back to our index HTML and start creating some classes and and IDs. So the unordered list, let's give this an ID so we can refer to it as what of uh, as it is, which is a nav bar. Now notice that I'm never using spaces. This is really important and I should have mentioned it earlier in HTML, CSS and in JavaScript in particular, not to use spaces ever cuz um, the browser doesn't really read spaces, it doesn't make sense to the browser, it cuts things off sometimes, and so instead you should use what's called camel case. First word is always lowercase, e coming style, and then every time there is a change in word, you capitalize the first letter of that second word. So nav bar basically stands for navigation bar, no spaces, nav, capital B for bar. And if you get in the habit of writing everything this way, you you remember names easier and you can simply you don't have to look back and see what you called things because you know how they're spelt so use camel case when you can alright and here under each list let's give these these bullets class names let's call these button class button and you can type it out 15 times or you can just hit copy paste All right, so we've got that now, and now we can really target these little suckers. So let's go back to our style really quickly here. And we will create a class button and an ID navbar. And so then what we want to do is we want to kind of give these these bullets kind of a, a different feel, and we also don't want them going up and down, we want them going horizontally. So let's start with this. Let's type display inline. And by doing that, as you can see now, our buttons are immediately put in a line. So this is a really crucial one to remember, or at least write down somewhere so you can refer to it, display inline. It will put everything in a row, these buttons in a row, instead of on top of each other. 
Notice also that it gets rid of the bullet point, which is nice, because you don't really want that in a nav bar. All right, now we're talking. Let's do something else. Notice that um, the text is kind of funky here, because we have links in, inside of these inside of these lists, list elements, and the links, of course, are defaulting to this kind of ugly looking purple background. So I'm actually going to jump out of this for a second and go up the tad, and we can also style our links. And we can say text decoration, which is where the underline comes from, none. Color, um, let's go yellow. No, that's horrible. Let's go uh, That's horrible too, but at least we can see it. So I changed the color of these, I changed the underlining, and then of course we want the font to match, so we will go with Corbel Arial. And so now we're talking. We have, uh, you can start to see these things again. Let's go back to the button. That background color will not do. Background color. Border. So two pixels, white, uh, solid. There we go. Now we have that. There's another thing you can do. It's called border radius. If you don't like the sharp edge nature of these, you can add a border radius, which curves the edges there, so five pixels, you can play around with it, but five pixels does that, where you, you can see a little bit of curvature. And notice that the text is like nudging up against the borders of these buttons. That's not what we want. So margin, which we talked about earlier to center the body and the web page, determines how much, where basically determines the outside border, how much space an element has around its edges on the outside. Padding determines how much space between the border of an element and what's on the inside. I don't think I described that very well, but think of padding as being on in, inside of a carton when you ship something, and margin being how far away things are from the outside of a box. So if you have a box that you're shipping, I don't know, porcelain in, you'll probably have a lot of padding on the inside so the porcelain isn't bumping up against the outside, of, the inside of the box. And maybe you'll ask your kids to um, keep a wide margin around the box and not get too close to it so they accidentally kick it and break it. I'm speaking from experience somewhat. So let's do padding. And if you just do padding without any directions, I'll just show you some different examples. You can type pixel, five pixels, and notice that there's padding. There's five pixels space all around the word. Sometimes that looks good, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of obnoxious here because there's way too much padding on the top and maybe even a little bit on the bottom, particularly for a navigation menu. So the other thing you can do is do padding right, five pixels, padding left, five pixels, um, padding top, three pixels, padding bottom, three pixels, eh, two pixels, two. All right, so now it's a little less even, but, but it looks pretty good. Let's set the margins here. If you set the margins, there's even more space in between these um, objects. So you can increase it or decrease it. If you use a minus, it gets you know even smaller. So you can play around with these. There are lots of tutorials online about making menus, um, but definitely you should be able to play around with these and have fun. Now the other thing I want to what did I want to do? Let's also make sure the text is centered. Notice that that the text is not centered in these boxes. So um, there's a neat little feature, text align center, and that should center it. And basically it's, it's looking okay. One thing I want to show you is, in general, maybe we don't mind hyperlinks that are this color, but we want 
our menu buttons to look the same regardless of what has links and what doesn't. So one thing we can do here is one great thing about CSS that's really powerful is we can edit specific HTML elements found in divisions or classes. So by typing class button space A, what I'm doing here is I'm targeting all hyperlinks that are found within an object that's got the class of button. And notice that it highlights the two that are there. These are the two hyperlinks that are within the class of button. And what we can do then is we can say font color white. And that didn't work. Oh, because you don't write font color. See? Coding error. Color white. And now they're white. I also realized just now that our text here is not, um, because it's not in the body, and the body is where we said Corbel, it isn't Corbel. So let's do that again. Dot button. Um, let's see. Actually, we don't even have to do this. My apologies. Let's do font family, Corbel, Arial. All right, now we're talking. It's looking pretty good. So we've basically made some buttons. We now have links on these buttons, except for the middle one. But we had links created. If we go back to index, we have links created in these buttons. So button A, page 2 and I'm going to cut list and paste it in here I'm actually going to rename this page 3 page 3 and page 4 pretty original names here this is great whoops not 43 but anyway I digress so we now have a page. If we click here, it goes to page two. If we go back, it goes here, vice versa. We are rocking. This goes to ESPN for some reason. Um, using CSS, you can totally style your website and start to have a lot of fun. Once you create a navigation bar, the reason I embedded this in a thing called header, I think, yep, div ID header, every page you make, copy div ID header and notice that all of our menu stuff is in here we can just go to edit copy we can open page 2 inside the body paste it link to the same CSS sheet And for um, links, you can just do a close bracket. You don't have to do the full kit and caboodle. Hit save. Let's go to page two. Look at that. It, we now have the same header menu on this page. And it goes back to the home page. If we want, we can go to our, um, our header here. Um, let's see, on page two, we can change this first one to index.html and type home instead of page two. And now it says home. Go back and go forth. All right. That was a doozy of a lecture. It's a lot to take in. And as you can see, I'm not even near perfect at this. I'm a hack myself. The point is that with just putzing around and a little bit of patience, you'll be able to make really cool and effective websites, particularly if you read about graphic design. And the main thing is, at least for my students and regarding my, my book, is you're setting these up not to make the most specific, like fantastic website ever created, but instead to get the site ready for embedding a map and making the style of the website fit in with the web map itself. 
So really you're learning these skills to make the map. It's, it's kind of like learning how to use Illustrator to make a nice print map. You're learning these CSS skills and also setting up divs and how to cre uh, create simple websites and nav bars to help you make your web map powerful. When we get into JavaScript, what you're going to be doing is creating little buttons like we just did, these menu buttons, and you'll be able to turn layers on and off, load data sets and, and unload data sets and these types of things. So that's the main goal here. All right, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. And good luck and keep coding.